Hi everyone, welcome to Singularity Hardware Order Analysis Video 9. Now I've got a lot of hardware to cover here today. This is actually two orders combined and almost all of this hardware is for the two client builds that I'm doing at the moment. So sit back, relax and I'll get stuck into it. Starting from the left hand side I have two EK radiators. Up here I have an EK FC bridge which is for water cooling multiple graphics cards. Here I have four Phobia LED strips. I'm pretty sure I got all UV. Beneath those I have four 140mm noise blocker PK3s. In front of those I have two bits power syringes and this is what I use to fill my water cooling systems. Here I have a whole bunch of fan grills. They're all black. I have some 120mm and 140mm fan grills. Next to those I have two water blocks. They're EK water blocks. Both of them are for 6990s. In front of those I have a 1 litre bottle of Feza Green UV reactive coolant. Underneath that uh, you can see two Silverstone accessories and these are for installing radiators into the TJ09 and TJ10. Now I have a couple of bags here and these are full of bits and pieces. I won't go into it now. I'll give you a look at it all when I pull it out of the bags but there's fittings and custom wiring and all kinds of stuff there. Now this is actually my screw, you know, nuts, bolts, screws and washers collection for installing radiators. And this is my entire collection but I've just gone and stocked it right up again. So I'll just go through and show you yeah, some of the new bits and pieces that I've bought to to stock up my radiator mounting collection. Over the back here I have a couple of Phobia radiator mounts. I have a 3x140mm radiator mount and a 3x120mm radiator mount. Okay, so that's a summary of everything that I've got here. Now I'm going to bring you in for a closer and more detailed look. Okay, first up the Feza 1 coolant. So this is the acid green UV reactive. And I almost always use Feza coolant because I've just had great experience with it. I've been using it for years. I've never had any problems. You know, I've left it in a loop for up to two years and it's still been running perfectly. I've got Feza 1 red UV reactive coolant running in this loop. This is the Singularity Beast 2 build. I'll put a link on the screen to the build log for this build. I've also got a review of Feza 1 coolant so I'll put a link on the screen to that as well. Okay, the EKFC bridge triple serial. Now I don't even need to pull this out of the box because I have one of these running right here in Singularity Beast 2. Now I'm running three GTX 580 3GB editions with EK water blocks. So it's only compatible with EK water blocks. So you know when you're buying the FC bridge you can't just buy the bridge itself. You have to buy this part here depending on what graphics card you have. There's also different versions of the FC bridge. You know there's there's one for dual, triple and quad graphics cards, etc. And there's also a serial and parallel version of the FC bridge. Now I don't have time to explain what that is but yeah, I will give a brief explanation. Basically serial forces the coolant through all of the water blocks whereas parallel it flows past and part of the flow goes through each water block. Now there's benefits from both and people argue it both ways. Check out the link in the video description to the FC Bridge product page on EK's website. There's an excellent diagram explaining serial and parallel for the FC bridge. Now the reason I like the FC bridge so much is because not only does it flow coolant through two, three or four graphics cards, it also holds them together. You know, it's a really sturdy, safe configuration for your graphics cards. It's convenient. You can construct all three of your graphics cards th together outside of your system and push them all in at the same time. Yeah, that's why I like it so much. I mean, people say that it restricts flow because of all the 90 degree turns, but I guess then you can just get the parallel version. 
Anyway, I think I've said enough about the FC bridge, so moving on. Next up, the Silverstone SST RAD Support 09. Now, this is actually designed for the TJ09 and the TJ10 cases from Silverstone and it's for installing radiators into those cases I'm pretty sure into the roof because there is a diagram here yeah I saw the diagrams and the measurements and I thought these would also be good for installing radiators into the bottom of the TJ11 and I mean the the bolt pattern doesn't line up but I can easily drill more holes and quite easily use and here is the four phobia 30 centimeter UV LED strips. These are actually the ones that you can hook up to the remote control. Phobia has this, yeah, remote control LED strip system. It's pretty, it's actually, uh, you know, quite impressive. It's something that I want to check out in the future because you can change the colors of the LED strips. You can make them flash and do all kinds of stuff. Powered by four pin Molex, you know, it's all sleeved love to see sleeve cables on on everything so that's why I got these as they look great even the Molex connectors are black you know they've tended to all the little details so there we go moving on to the fan grills so there's the 140 millimeter fan grills I think these are from ModSmart and 120 millimeter fan grills they're excellent quality they're all painted black you know the the paint job's good like there's there's nothing rough about them a lot of grills you know they're really rough the the paint job can be really rough like peeling in places but but these ones are really nice okay moving on to the EK6990 water box so these are the nickel plexi versions and you're going to be seeing these upcoming in a client build log so I'm not going to be taking these out of the boxes to give you a look or keep you in suspense you can see these are the new EN nickel plated water box which means they have absolutely no problems with corrosion because EK had problems with their nickel plating corroding a while back but they've completely fixed that with this new EN nickel plating okay now for a look at the noise blocker black silent pro pk threes so i've got four of these they're a 140 millimeter by 25 millimeter fan and i'm going to be installing these onto a black ice gtx gen 2 extreme 560 millimeter radiator in one of the upcoming client build logs so there's the specifications 1700 rpm 1.781 static pressure 90 cfm and only 15 decibels which is incredible so still an incredibly silent fan even at you know a moderately well a moderately high rpm very decent specification so here's the fan i'll be you know covering these in detail again in the client build log I'll be showing you them up and running in the build and you know you'll be able to see the the real world performance as well because yeah once I always at the end of my client build logs I have all of the performance results and temperature results so I like the way they've done this they've just got a very short cable out there and then they've given you all the options you need extension cables so you've got a, a three pin extension cable there because they're actually a three pin fan that's a short extension cable it looks to be about 200 mil and then you've got this longer one which is about half a meter I'd say mounting screws and well actually there's long mounting screws in there and there's also like nuts in there as well so I guess you can like bolt right through the fan through the case and use the nut on the other side or you can bolt straight into a radiator as long as the thread is the same it looks to be about an M3 thread and then you've got these silencers 
as well to prevent vibration. So there we go, the Noise Blocker Black Silent Pro PK3s. Okay, the Phobia radiator stands. So I have a triple 140mm version which I've unboxed to give you a look. And I also have the triple 120mm version just there. These are both black and you can see they can be mounted to something at the bottom here and there's mounts on both sides and you can actually mount the radiator to either side of it like either side of this panel here the reason I got this was so that I can mount a 560 millimeter radiator to the bottom of a Silverstone Tamjin TJ11 and I've actually got a lot of options you know I've got a lot of different things that I can use to mount the radiator but this is just one of the options that I wanted to have handy just in case because I want to use the best you know the best option out of all the options that I have it's also good to have things like this in stock for me because you know I'm constantly building custom systems for a living so I don't use this in the Silverstone Temjin TJ11 builds I'll be certainly using these in the future. So next up the EK Coolstream radiators. I have the XTX240 and the XT360. These are going to be going into my stock but nothing ever stays in stock for long because I do have a lot going on and I'm pretty sure I already have something in mind for these radiators. I think I'll be using them in my upcoming water cooling tutorial this is an excellent opportunity for you guys to see the difference between the XT and the XTX so this is the XTX 240 and the XT 360 so I'm going to get rid of these boxes and give you a good look around so the XTX was actually released just recently and it's a 64 millimeter thick radiator whereas the XT is only 45 millimeters thick the other extras that you get with the XTX is more G1 quarter inch threads. So you get G1 quarter inch threads there, inlet and outlet, and another two on that side. And you also get a drainage port at the bottom there. You get all this extra printing, EK logos on the back and on the sides. But other than that, other than the extra thickness, the extra G1 quarter inch threads, you know, the extra configuration options, the, the paint job seems fairly similar and you know you still get the M3 threads for mounting the radiators and the fans. I'll just give you a look around the XT now. So you do get, there is an EK logo on either side no drainage port, UK logo on the back there and you can see on the other side there there's no extra G1 quarter inch threads very high quality high quality paint job you know there's no bent over fins often you know when I pull a radiator out of the box it's got a whole bunch of bent fins already just from just from it being manhandled during manufacturing and I won't name any names but there's a particular company where every time I pull the radiator out of the box and it's just you know full of bent over fins almost to the point where it's leaking it's just ridiculous so very happy to see that these radiators are in absolutely top condition and yeah they're an excellent looking radiator particularly the XTX. I'm very excited to get the XTX up and running and see how it performs. Okay this is what was in the two bags that you saw at the start of the video. So over here I have some custom sleeved cold cathode inverter switches. So you got an on off switch there. It's fully sleeved as you can see. It's been made up by performance PCs. That goes into the 
inverter just there and you've got four pin Molex male and female so you can power the cold cathode inverter and run power off to something else and yeah I'm just I don't know if you guys have seen the stock wiring for a, a cold cathode inverter it's horrible it's you know all different colors and I've been wanting to sleeve some of my own for ages but yeah sleeving cables is unfortunately something that I can never find time for so I was happy to find out that I could get these made up pretty cheap and this is what I'll be using from now on for you know to power all of my cold cathodes okay over here I have a bunch of fittings I always seem to get barb fittings thrown in when I don't order them I don't know how they get there I didn't I didn't pay for them they don't, they're not on the list so anyway here I have a couple of coolant filters these are the filters that I use when I use filters which is not that often here I have some bits power black sparkle multi-link adapters so these ones have a G1 quarter inch male thread and a G1 quarter inch female thread so they're handy for certain configurations and I have some some more here these ones are also called multi-link adapters but they're slightly different they have two female threads and here I have some Bits Power Black Sparkle temperature sensors and up here I have something that I haven't purchased before but I decided to get these you know for loops that are difficult to difficult to fill like when the top of the res is a bit difficult to get to or you know anything like that you can put some tubing up from it and these are Phobia flexible funnels I'm actually not going to get them out of the, the packets because I might be sending these to my clients as well so I want to send them you know as new but yeah G1 quarter inch thread down there you just screw it in and you can fill a loop a lot more easily thanks to the funnel and here I have my nuts, bolts, screws, washers collection for mounting radiators and yeah I've just stocked this right up it's actually a little bit mixed up because I didn't have compartments for every single different you know different bolt but yeah a little bit boring I'm sorry but I just thought I'd show you all the different sizes here I've got 5 millimeter 30 millimeter 35 millimeter 40 millimeter 50 millimeter I've got button heads I've got Allen key heads, screw heads, I've got absolutely everything actually those look like maybe 12 millimeter there so yeah I've got a lot of different ones for different configurations you know when you're mounting radiators you might be bolting it through a, a thick aluminium panel you know a thick case and then you might be going through the fans into the radiator you might be going straight through the case into the radiator you know you might be who knows there's there's a lot of different variables when mounting radiators so I like to be prepared and have as many different length different threaded bolts that I can actually these are all M3 and M4s because radiators are usually either M3 or M4 finally the two bits power syringes so I've always used syringes to fill up my water cooling systems because I just find it's the easiest way you know to prevent any spills they hold a decent amount of fluid they fill the system pretty fast yeah I just find it's a, a very easy way to fill fill up a water cooling loop so I always send a syringe with a client build to the client so that they can top up their loop and replace their coolant down the track and yeah these bits power syringes are as as good as any so I got a couple of these one for each of the client builds that I have going on at the moment so that sums up this video thanks for watching please subscribe like and favorite if you want to see more